The arts are alive and well here in the Twin Cities, especially for the senior population and the aging population. And I'm so pleased today to have several of the local organizations who have elements of their programming uh, related or a focus on senior programming to be with us to just talk about what's available. Because we know just because we're getting older doesn't mean our creativity goes away, our abilities go away, and uh, how fortunate to live in a wonderful Twin Cities with such a rich arts community, especially with lots of opportunities for our seniors. So I want to uh, take this opportunity first to have each of our participants introduce themselves and talk a little bit about the organization and program uh, they're involved in. And I'm gonna start out with Mar Marlene. Hey, um, I'm Marlene Cox, and I'm the Artful Aging Program Manager for Compass. And Compass has been around for about 50 years. And the Artful Aging Program is one of about seven arts learning programs that we offer. And it's through a roster of about 100 teaching artists that um, have all sorts of um, disciplines. So performing arts, musicians, writers and visual arts and so I work to connect all of those teaching artists with communities across Minnesota um, that serve older adults so that could be in care centers, senior centers, galleries, um, apartment building, community rooms so wherever um, seniors feel comfortable gathering then we bring the arts to them. Fantastic. Uh, Maria and Parker Jan uh, Janae are here and um, tell us a little bit about your organization and uh, what you do? Well, um, we have been uh, at Kairos Alive. Kairos Alive. Kairos Alive. Yep. We'll, we'll yeah. Say who we are. <laughs> and we've been going for 21 years. We're just having a yep. our birthday, and our focus always has been working with older adults, really in 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 dance, music, and theater. Mm -hmm. and, and our focus has started as an intergenerational performing company, and and our our work has really grown into that improvisational form of uh, creative dance, um, music, and theater working together. And, and always as a form of both community joy, individual joy within community, both joy and healing. Um, and, and the work is based on the work of Maria Janae that she's been innovating um, inter in intergenerational all ability and intercultural communities the last 45 years. I told her to make it shorter. <laughs> so, uh, and Kairos, like Compass, um, works in collaboration with a lot of different um, artists of different disciplines, um, but we work collaboratively and teach collaboratively. So within a classroom, um, instead of that individual artist, um, it's at least two to three teams. Fantastic. Uh, Richard, kind of representing somewhat of the theater group here, tell us a little bit about Theater 55. Yes, hi, thanks for having me. Um, Theater 55 is a uh, uh, mission is to enrich the lives of elders as actors, audiences, and lifelong learners. Uh, we produce and create shows as well as have classes and uh, residencies within senior homes. Um, unfortunately, the latter two we haven't been able to do in person, um, but we've continued to create theater through a different um, venue uh, by doing it live as a radio play now and creating radio plays um, based on the 1940s radio shows um, that existed. And so we're creating that. So uh, we've only been around a year and a half, um, took off like crazy uh, when, when, the, when we started um, by doing a production of, of Hair performed by those who lived it. Uh, I was followed, there. Uh, you were there. <laughs> <laughs> followed up by uh, um, Pippin and then uh, You're in Town, which uh, ended up uh, having to close in the middle of the run due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. But uh, Theater 55 was developed because of a, a lack of, of opportunity for people 55 plus to be actually on stage performing rather than simply being in the audience as audience members. And so I applied a lot of the work that I had done working with youth theater to, uh, to the senior community and created Theater 55. Um, you brought up, and I want to ask this question to each of you or each of the organizations. Um, we've heard about joy and we've heard about uh, working with youth and now working with adults or elderly. Um, what, is, uh, what is the difference? What, what have you found as you uh, started incorporating or focusing on the senior community? Um, how, are they, how are they different when it comes to the, to the learning process and how they, what, they, what do they bring to these experiences? I think... Um, there's a, a definite um, 
life experience that's the biggest difference. The other differences are not, they're all similarities really. Okay. You know, you take people, you people are very vulnerable when they're on stage, uh, when they're in front of an audience, you're the most vulnerable you can be. And what you're doing is really applying those same concepts of being open, communicating, how you work together collaboratively, how you function together as a team with one solid goal versus um, independent kind of uh, advancement ship um, and how you do that. And, and I think that's this very similar working with youth as it is with, with uh, people 55 plus. But I think the difference there is that with the 55 plus community, you have life experience that enters into that too. But with that means that you also have all of that beating down that's happened over that time span. So you're not, you may be still eager to learn, um, but you're afraid because it's been built into you to be afraid to go out there and try something new if you're not going to be 100% successful because you've already been successful up to this point in your life, or maybe not. But at that point, that's where the biggest difference is, where a, a young person may jump in head first into the pool, as it were, and, and come out swimming, where an, uh, somebody who is older looks at it and maybe will dip their foot in and maybe get their leg wet before they're gonna jump all the way into the pool and end up uh, coming out still being able to swim. Yeah, well, haven't we all, haven't we all learned to take calculated risks, kind of, I, I, I suppose? At the same time, I hear a lot, and I'm an acting teacher, I, when I have someone a little bit older or mature, for a lot of them, it's sort of like, I've wanted to do this all my life. I'm finally, I'm finally stepping in. So let's hear from the other groups too. Um, are you finding, uh, how are you adjusting or how are you finding seniors to work with in general? Well, can we go actually back to what Richard was talking oh, about? Oh, completely. City and, and Kairos, I think is talking about intergenerational. Well, and I, I think, and then what I was also thinking that intergenerational piece, and I really want to meant it, uh, bring up the power of our, incredible multicultural community and that's been very important to the work of Kairos all along and so when I think about um, both older adults and also thinking about working with young people the work for me is always creating a, a healing safe place um, because it, you know depending on our experience we might have different trauma um, over uh, how we express ourselves and for, for me, starting in dance, um, that was my language, right? And when I started working with young people for many years, and I started a group called Young Dance, which is still going, you know, I found that even young people, because of um, what they were told of how they look or what they did, you know, there was those, oh, I don't know if I can do that. So I, I believe that my responsibilities as an artist and opportunity is create, create a space where people can express themselves and, and including older adults with so much experience or maybe an English as a second language. Um, what I love about dance and music is that we can create that um, expression of our life experiences in a, in a, in a, in a space that is both welcoming and um, uh, open to many different ways of, um, of creating or expressing. I just wanted to add one thing. As, as an artist with disability, I think um, I'm in spaces a lot of time with people that get all the labels on them. And so, right, they won't, e I mean, a lot of the folks that I know wouldn't even show up or even know where to look to audition for one of your show, shows, Richard. You know, instead that's, you know, the work of both Kairos and, and with, with Compass as well is, is showing up in those places. But even as we show up, I think we all show up with our own judgments around ourselves and how things should happen and what languages you know, I work in a world, and for myself, as, as in my own disability and recovery work, is that language is, has so many different forms, whether it's music or written language or movement or that beat of a drum or that wind or that painting. You know, I think that's part of, and that's why to me, I'm a big film fan. So I just want to say that my dad <laughs> used to um, judge for the film. For oh, okay. Okay. Long ago. And so as like a seven year old, I got to watch those like weird art films. And so I love weird art films and I, I create those worlds um, in mine, you know, whereas Richard is working with script, Kairos is really in that, um, that, that unscripted space, to, but still with that same kind of intention 
and, and I also just want to um, just bring attention to the word elderly that you brought. In the communities that I work in, we work with older adults or yep. aged communities. So I just invite you into a space maybe where we don't use that word. Oh, okay. I, I, I appreciate hearing that because, well, and it's much like, uh, yeah, it's much like as I've, as I've been older, I've, I've learned to not say, this is my old friend. I'd say longtime friend and things. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, hi, this is my longtime friend as opposed, I mean, I don't want to say it's obvious that they're older, but um, I appreciate that sensitivity, you know, and again, as a 65 year old person, you know, how do you define yourself? Of course, for me, I kind of think of middle age as like 18 to 80 or something, you know, it, it's, and I, th I do also think that uh, our age in number of years is, I don't want to say becoming less and less important, but um, for the people I hang out with, it's like our, our bodies might feel older, but our brains and the things we're working on, um, there's less limits. Um, Marlene, are you finding uh, seniors to be uh, free somewhat and, and uh, unencumbered or what, what experiences are you having working with seniors? I think um, in some ways working with older adults is like working with anyone else. I mean, everybody, and as Richard and um, Maria mentioned, is that everybody brings with them the things that they feel they cannot do or that I'm not an artist or I can't draw. And I think the work that we all do in community is to lower those barriers of saying, I can't do this. And I think from age five to 95, we all deal with that. And so I think that's what um, having a teaching artist or um, doing theater is just to break down those barriers that we all have within ourselves to, um, to fully create and be in our bodies and um, participate. And also like the social connection too, which I think is so important. And I think that um, the arts in any form, if you can do it in community, I think the the benefits are so much greater because you're making connections with new groups of people that maybe are not in your neighborhood or in the place um, that you shop or however. So you're like meeting these new groups of people. So then that, you know, that really broadens your mind of like how people interact with each other and just learning about how different people live and interact in the world. So are you as, and I want to hear from all of you, are you finding that the, um, Seniors that get involved, are they uh, a mixture of like people trying things for the first time or veteran painters or dancers or actors? Um, I'm assuming it's all sort of all inclusive, but what do you, what do you find? Well, I'll just follow up and then yep. um, I think it's all over the map. So um, I think some folks, because we do work a lot in care centers, so some people um, are there reluctantly because you know maybe their friend dragged them along and then they kind of warm up to it and so and then there's some uh you know one compass teaching artist just taught a watercolor class um through live streaming and so there were there was a participant there that had painted maybe in their 20s mm -hmm. and they're 94 and picking it back up again and so i think you know it's it's really all over the map and um and then there's some folks that are in their 80s that have never painted and are trying something new. So um, I think just what we always are trying to encourage with staff and the teaching artists is just to, to get people to join so that they don't have that failure, the failure to launch where you're just not trying something new is just to like, just show up and stick around. And um, yeah, so. You'll, you'll get lifelong learning. Is that right. the same right. thing hold true for, um, for the other two groups as well, a variety of people? Oh, I, I think so. I have these stories that um, I treasure. Uh, we, we work with Irv Williams, um, who's an amazing sax player, mm -hmm. uh, master sax player. Mr. Smooth um, passed away. Yes, <laughs> Marlene has heard him at the Dakota. And I met him back in 2005. And um, he really changed sort of my life, just working with um, this incredible elder artist, um, but he was always creating a new a, and was willing to work with a, a, you know, an intergenerational dance company. And then when you um, speak about 95, we, um, uh, I worked with a dancer who was in the WPA Modern Dance Company, Ida Arbeit. Yeah. And uh, I met her at 99. Uh, her her uh, uh, 
son called me up and said, I think you want to talk to my mom. And I started talking to her and she had danced with, Hel she was, had danced with Ellen Tamaris. That's the WPA modern dance company. And, um, and I said, well, Ida, we'd love to work with you. And she said, well, I am not about the past. I am about the present. And I ended up writing a piece of, uh, about her uh, just in that her eros was so powerful mm -hmm. that um, as she danced um, with us till she was 101 and a half, literally was in hospice, we brought her down and on, in a wheelchair and she performed for a, um, the Twin Cities Public Television um, art, uh, Minnesota artist and she rocked it. So that having that opportunity as well as working with you know, people that grew up in Venezuela dancing all the time, um, or, um, and men that get up and dance all the time if they're from, uh, you know, Ecuador or Chile, has given me this bigger, expansive possibility. Um, and, and then as, as Marlene said, the folks that are going, I don't know about this, but then they're like, well, I used to dance. And, and in fact, we started our program we call Intergenerational Dance Hall, because of older adults saying, oh, mm -hmm. we dance every Friday and Saturday night. That's how I met my wife. That's how I met my husband. That's how I fell out of love. That's how I fell in love. <laughs> my parents met, met at a ballroom, so <laughs> I, I got oh, you there. Which ballroom? Which yeah. ballroom do you Oh, remember? it's a Playland Ballroom up in Kimball. It's a, I'm just out the St. Cloud, Playland Ballroom. Oh, we, we all learned, had to learn how to dance and, you know, waltzes and polkas and shoddishes and all that kind of stuff. And my parents danced, they've now deceased, but they, they danced throughout their life. It was, it was a really important thing for them. And Richard, are you finding, uh, again, as, as having gone to some of your performances, you have some pretty experienced people, but less experienced people. You give lots of people opportunities. I think yeah. there were 50 people on the stage during uh, HAIR. Um, are, are you finding that collaboration working well with the seniors? It, it works really well. And, and there's a lot of uh, peer mentoring that happens. And, and yes, we have, we have people who have made their living in the theater. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and we have people who have uh, maybe experienced it, dropped out because of life, uh, raising children, et cetera, and get back into it. And then there are those who are trying it for the very first time. But uh, one example is somebody who spent 40 years working in, in corporate America, uh, hadn't done a play since high school. Uh, she was in, in uh, all three of those performances and, and one of the radio shows as well. Uh, and and uh, uh, a local agent saw her, signed her, and uh, she got nice. to the commercial. And at 72, she said, now I can call myself an actress, too. Yeah. <laughs> to everything else. So it's fabulous to see uh, the variety of people. And what I'm trying to encourage by doing sort of, and intentionally was doing large scale musicals so that we could have a flexible cast and include more people but was to really create a sense of that mentoring of what it means when you're participating in the arts, in this art form. How do, you, how do you learn about things that might be, for us as theater artists, we know all of these certain things or how you behave when you walk into the room or what happens when this happens or what this particular moving upstage or downstage even means, for example. So then uh, you're starting with those basics, but if you have a mentor that's there to help you along, uh, you can learn it much quicker and pick up on it. And people want to be part of that and they don't want to come in not knowing. So it's easier to turn to a person on your left or right and say, what does that mean exactly? Or how does this happen? Or what does he mean by blocking? Because nobody would know what that meant you know, unless you were part of the business already. So, so learning that without having to stop the flow of what's happening by having peer mentors. And of course, we as, as human beings always love to impart our knowledge onto others. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the older we get, the more we want to do that. <laughs> I think everyone turns into teachers, don't we? Don't we sort of, yes. they, you know, for a parent or a grandparent or, we, we, in some respects, all turn into teachers, you know? Absolutely, absolutely we do. And, and that's by, you know, that's by nature. And I think theater as that social construct, you know, what I found is that it, it really helped um, 
combat a lot of things that I was reading about with the senior community uh, as well, which was social isolationism, which caused you know, poor health, which caused obesity, which can cause um, depression, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but learning how to self-promote, for example, um, we not only learned how to sing, act, and dance on stage, but you also had to self-promote the show. Mm -hmm. Facebook and other social media platforms and those who didn't know how to do that learned how to do that because we taught people how to do that as well so then you become your own promoter as we know as as actors and performers you always have to promote yourself because otherwise you're not gonna you're not gonna have an audience out there and, and then half of the art is having that audience to respond to your art um, I think you brought up also a really good point and we don't have to get caught in statistics because I don't have them all in front of me, but we've overwhelmingly read in AARP magazine and, and in other literatures and research, the idea that um, people in general, and in particular seniors that are involved in creative pursuits and in the arts, they have their mental acuity, their agility, their ability to adapt with stress, their socialization, all of that just rises exponentially. Um, it's like anything, you know, young people who learn a musical instrument tend to be better in school because of different things, dexterity, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. Our cognitive things are, are elevated by the arts. Um, and, and the other thing I just, I know I have one more quick question for you guys, but um, I was reminded when we COVID sort of hit earlier this year, how so many people were turning to the arts, the idea, and especially as a filmmaker, it's like all of a sudden everybody was watching more Netflix and Hulu and all of this stuff, but all of us have had to readjust to this accelerated change. So my last question for each of your groups is, how have you adjusted to um, social distancing and the pandemic guidelines and all of that kind of stuff? And also just make sure you let us know how to learn more about your organizations. And again, I'll start with Marlene. Uh, tell us a little bit more about how you've adjusted, okay. technically and otherwise, and, uh, and how people can get a hold of you. Okay, great. Um, I also wanted to say that I read an article that um, you don't have to be good at art to have all of those benefits. Oh, <laughs> to, um, it was a great article. So I was like, see, there's no excuse for somebody to not try something new. Well, and so, I always think one of my, as, a, as an artist and as a teacher, I always remind people, for instance, from an acting standpoint, acting really isn't designed to be good and bad and right and wrong. It right. just is, much like a painting on a wall or if you watch a dance, it's, you don't look for wrong things. You, you look for a story and you look for a feeling, you know, and so you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just the act of doing it, yep. which makes all the difference. So, um, so the past six months have been really busy for us at Compass because we're just having to reimagine every program that we had developed um, for the older adults, uh, me specifically, the residencies that were, that were happening and we had to shut them down. Um, and so it's been uh, a, a steep learning curve as it has been for every, everybody. Um, and so what we've done is just pivot to um, either doing pre-recorded sessions where there's individual um, art supplies that are delivered to the community or live streaming sessions, or if there is no technology available or internet, um, sometimes the artists do phone check-ins on um, artwork that's in process for the participants. And so really it's been um, just a lot of communication between the partners that I work with um, to figure out like what does the community need right now? What do they have and how can we um, bring that to those communities so that they're not isolated and that we also don't overwhelm the staff too in the care centers. And so, um, so each residency or workshop that I work on, it's, it's completely new because I wanna make sure that I'm serving the community um, at just, you know, like exactly what they need and so that nobody gets over, overwhelmed. So, um, but I'm really confident that a lot of the, a lot of the things that I've been learning and working on and developing new program will stay past this year. And um, I think it's been really good for uh, older adults and the, the, um, the partners that I serve to recognize that the technology gap is real and um, older adults definitely have the capacity to learn how to work on a tablet or an iPad. And it's just a matter of 
giving them the like attention and uh, just the steps to know how to do it. And so that we are able to learn new things at any age. So, um, and then you can reach me. I'm Marlene, M-A-R-L-A-I-N-E at compass.org. And, um, or you can go to compass.org, C-O-M-P-A-S.org and find out more. Fantastic. Keros, alive? Keros alive, yes. Well, the, oh, Keros, an elder right. once said, you do it right, but you say, say it wrong. Because we were saying Kairos. Kairos. She says it's Keros. So Kairos, Kairos. is time. There's Kairos, Kairos yep. which is chronological time, that linear time, and then Kairos, which is the circular time. Oh, got and it. Okay. Kairos, so the circular time, we've been innovating online for three years. So we, I yeah. have to say it was, that yeah, go ahead, this Maria, really sorry. helped us because yeah. people are going, Zoom? What is Zoom? using Zoom? <laughs> and, you know, yeah. my work, again, as, as both a performer, as an arts educator, you know, is the, the challenge and the opportunity of exciting a, a community, whether uh, uh, in a nursing home care center or uh, like at the, um, the VA hospital. And, um, but then, you know, we can't come all the time or the grant runs out. So we started um, utilizing the Zoom platform three years ago, yeah. just to, um, to be able to be more adaptable, to be more accessible, and also sustain the arts experience. So we have worked quite a lot in um, northern Minnesota, and um, that's in, with uh, the Blandin Foundation has a broadband part. It's about 20 years strong. So the inequity is around the tablet is one thing, but we don't even have broadband accessible in equitable Wi-Fi. ways through, yep. around the whole state of Minnesota. So um, Bernadine Joslin and the Blandin Foundation, who are partners of ours, we've been partnering with them actually before COVID to, to innovate. We, we had partners in Florida being like, we want you to come, but we, we, we don't have the money, right? The, the arts program is, is always the add-on or the performance. And so we just really answered a call of our, like what, uh, what Marlene, Marlene saying, saying, you know, we just, we really answered the call on an organizational individual and we saw that it worked. And so, um, in the we, COVID times, we got, we put together a studio. Um, we, at first we, um, we, well, had, we had a studio, but we, in our, uh, right. In the third floor studio. office. So That's we wanted right. to be on the first floor. So it was accessible. Um, we, uh, we use software to make it more dynamic. So I want to say this has been really helpful for us because zoom has gotten so much better than oh, they were. Yeah in February. And we're able yeah. to still collaboratively teach. It's challenging and do our dance halls. Actually, we have one on um, Saturday, on Saturday with American Swedish Institute and the Minnesota Orchestra, mm -hmm. um, which probably won't, you know, um, we'll, we'll have some more. But um, yeah, as an artist, we're really seeing this, this time and this technology and this need, as you, everyone's been talking about, the need for the artist, you know? Mm -hmm. Why do we always have to be forgotten about? And so for me, what I love in the technology which is needed, um, going back to the word mentorship, I wanted to also speak to technology lends itself a great way for mentorship across generations and abilities. So I want to also speak to there's mentorship between folks that only dance just with their eyes and folks that can dance with the maybe just the top half of their body. And so thinking of that, we've seen and, and had partnership with high school and elementary school, but specifically high school students interested in technology and accessibility. Um, we are already working with um, a high school and a senior living community, having the young people at the senior living community being dance volunteers along with our Kairos volunteers, which are mainly old, younger, older adults. Mm -hmm. And then the Kairos crew with students um, at a mobile studio at their high school. So um, I, to me, it's, it, to me what, is exciting about this, which is what film already does and lends, to, lends itself to is that accessibility and that connection. So now every time we have a show, it's all ages, all abilities, you know, in, in many forms of language. Right, we were finding um, as we were doing our Zoom shows, um, uh, we call Creativity Together, uh, we had three generations in uh, on at the same time because people had, you know, quarantined together. And, but um, what we are doing now is we have um, weekly programming. Um, we do these special events. Um, and so people can reach out to us. We'll be doing a fall series that's free. Um, and it, it'll be, act, you can access it on Zoom um, with uh, our partners at Minnesota Orchestra. Um, and so, and then the other thing that I want to say about, um, I was going to say something else, but I forgot. But um, <laughs> you can reach us at kairosalive.org 
or I'm Parker at kairosalive.org. I'm Maria at kairosalive.org. And um, what I wanted to say that what's also exciting, I see a future where older adults also will be able to use this technology to, to create their own work in different ways that they hadn't been able to. And we are just starting a program, um, just as Marlene was talking about in a care center that originally we quick pivoted and uh, our friends also at Midwest Special Services because we work with people with disabilities. And we've actually found that there's been some um, more intimate kind of intimacy in that uh, uh, art uh, express expressions expression exchange, you know, the art exchange through through this medium. Um, and and that's exciting as well. But yeah, people can um, join us. There are lots of different possibilities. Both as a volunteer or as a participant, we're always just, and, and our volunteers range in age from about 23 to 95. So, um, and we're- And you're Zoom veterans. That's, a, that's Zoom an important veterans, thing. But we're always learning and yeah. there's always something that goes wrong. Yes. It always freezes when you don't want it to. Yeah. Well, we've, we've done pretty well. We've done pretty well so far. Richard, it yeah. seems like you've done a little bit of uh, reshifting with your radio plays and different things, but quickly give us a, a, an idea of how you're adjusting. Yeah, so that, that was a big, um, a big shift was from doing large scale musicals to changing to this idea I came up with, which was to do um, this radio play. And so what we're doing is a series of Philip Marlowe uh, private detective stories. Um, based on the originals done by NBC Radio, and, and then uh, it moved from NBC Radio to CBS Radio. And we're doing uh, three of those. Uh, the next one will be this, this Saturday, but you can buy this package on demand, so you can actually listen to all three of those. And they are the original uh, transcripts of the original radio plays, including the old, uh, the old commercials, like brought to you by Pepsodent, America's Toothpaste the cleaner, whiter, brighter toothpaste, you know? So, uh, so, so we're doing it in, in whole uh, and creating those so that they're then on demand. And then if this is successful, we'll probably do more of that type of thing um, until, until we can all be back together in a space. Um, from here, we're also looking at the possibility of how you can safely be in space together and kind of work on this because it is that social aspect that everybody's talked about. And it is really about um, building that community in a different way that, that, that uh, we really want to create. Um, so this uh, adapting classes, adapting those types of things and providing programming that can be um, online is great. However, we also realize that, that that can't be the only way because, you know, as we all know, you know, the theater and, and dance and performance isn't necessarily about watching it on screen because that's a different experience and we already have that, that exists and television and, and, and movies, etc. So live performance is slightly different than, than the film performance or something that, that exists on a screen. And, and we want that experience. We want that, that true uh, response from an audience that yep. you get, that intimacy of that. So, so well, we're continuing yep. to adapt. We're and continuing. Yes, theater55.org. Is that how we? Is that, that is correct. Right. Thank you. So, yes, theater55.org. Make sure we get that in there. Well, and again, as you mentioned, it's much like us in the film world. Uh, we want to try to encourage people to keep coming to the movie theater. Um, some of the movie theaters are obviously open because we love that shared community experience, but we also have to live within a whole set of new guidelines as well. I've so appreciated your time and your energy today to just really um, highlight the plethora of arts that are available in your particular three organizations as well. I would also add I'm very, I'm privy to um, Stories 55, which is out of Film North, which teaches filmmaking classes and storytelling classes. Uh, one of my um, older acting students also teaches seniors at the Clay Center. Um, so we know if you just, with a little bit of effort, watching these kind of things with a little bit of effort, uh, our senior population can find lots of outlets, inter intergenerational outlets as well um, for their arts. Again, a big thanks to AARP for their continued support of the Twin Cities Film Fest. And thank you to all of you for sharing all this wonderful information here today. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Thank you. Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.